What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and for this video uh, and coming up with all the other theory videos in the future, I'm not going to use my webcam because I get some weird recording errors and video lag. So just for the theory videos, I'll leave the face cam out. All right, so in this section for our RPG series, our turn-based combat series, we are going to be dealing with mostly with unit health and units dying in the game. So right now when we go into our game and we play it, we can see that we don't have units uh, dying once they hit zero. In fact, they go into the negative. So that will be the main focus of this section. But before we even get into that, let's implement a few fixes that we are going to need. So the first thing that we're actually going to do is right now we have a left mouse button spamming bug. All right, so uh, this bug we can fix with a simple bull. All right, and we're going to call this uh, bull, we will call it allow input or something along these lines. Basically, as long as this bool, this variable is false, we can't do anything in the game. In other words, the player, us, can't start just randomly spamming the left mouse button and playing the animations over and over again or spamming the uh, attack animation. We don't want that. And so what we want, what we're going to do is we're going to take this allow input which will exist only in the manager, right? So it's only going to be in C manager. And all it's going to do is start off at false. After the initialize phase, so after init, oh, I misspelled that a bit there. After init, it switches to true. Now, once we left click, that variable then becomes false again. And so after it comes back to the start of the round, it gets switched back to true. This is just a rough overview of how one, one variable or one Boolean in this case can make a big difference in your game and helping to control the flow. So basically what we're trying to do is when it is the player's turn to be able to select things, we can't just end up, we can't just spam left click um, anywhere in the screen. We want to be able to control when they can and very soon we will be able to control where we can click, right? Once we start putting in the UI. Speaking of UI, we're going to add a little bit of that in this section as well. Basically what we're going to do is we are going to add in our HP and I guess also our SP, our skill points bars. And this section, the way that we're going to set it up is we are essentially going to use a sprite with multiple sub images, basically an animated sprite. Okay, so we're going to need at minimum two frames of a, I don't have my keyboard plugged in because I don't have enough um, USB ports on my PC, so I'm going to have to use my mouse to undo. That's okay. Uh, so we will need a two frame animation. And basically what this is, is as an example, we have our HP bar. Now our HP bar is going to be consisting, it's going to be made up of two parts. We're going to have the background, let's write BG, and we'll also have the actual bar itself, right? And the actual bar will be on a completely separate frame as the background. So this is essentially what it'll look like. I can't draw a line straight. <laughs> anyway, so, what we're going to do to be able to control this sprite is we are going to use in the draw GUI event, draw GUI, GUI, in the draw GUI event, what we will do is we will use two functions, right? The first one is draw sprite. 
draw my W looks off, but that's okay. Draw a sprite. And this one basically draws a static image. And that's what we're going to use to draw our background. To draw the bar itself, what we're going to use is draw sprite. I think it's sprite part, if I remember correctly. And essentially what this what this draw sprite part does is you can control how much of a sprite and also which sprite in terms of an animated um, sprite here, which sub image you're going to draw and how much of that sub image you're going to draw. And so for us naturally using a, an HP bar with draw sprite part makes sense. Don't worry about the code because basically we've already written it out. How we're going to draw this bar here is essentially going to be the current health, current health, current HP, divided by, and I'll put that on the next line, I think, divided by, or actually even better. Like I said, I don't have my keyboard plugged in. So it's going to be current HP divided by max HP. All right, and that's how we are going to determine how much of that bar we will draw. There is another function that's similar to draw sprite as well as draw sprite part, and that is the extended version. The difference between using these regular draw sprites and draw sprite part and the extended one is we can actually put in other features, specifically colors. So let's say, for example, you wanted your bar, your HP bar to change color as it goes down. You can use Draw Sprite Extended to be able to do that. For us, however, we want to keep things simple and we will not be using Extended. Okay, so essentially what we have right now is our health, right? 10 out of 10 as debug text. Debug text. There we go. What we're going to do is replace it entirely with the HP bar. And it's going to look something like this, right? something like that. You could also start implementing your skill points now, and it's totally up to you if you want to. Essentially, the formula isn't going to change. It's always going to be whatever the current value is, whether it's HP or SP, over or divided by the max HP or SP. So it's totally up to you how you're going to do that. If you guys want a bit of help with that in the engine, don't worry. I will be creating the sprites in GMS2 for everybody to see. All right, the last bit here, and this is actually the main focus of this section, is going to be dealing with units death. All right, so obviously right now when our character reaches zero HP, we want several things to happen. The first one is we actually want to send a broadcast. I'll just write BRD, right? BRDC, right? So once we send this broadcast, it's going to tell the manager, manager, uh, C, M, N, G. It's going to tell the manager that, hey, one unit has died and we need to do certain things things. I'll get back to that in just a second. This is our unit, of course. The next thing that it needs to do is it also needs to run its destroy function, All right? So destroy. Oof. If you guys can hear any construction in the background, it's because they are currently restructuring in a building nearby. So I apologize for any weird noises that you guys might hear. I, just, I can't help that at the moment. So anyway, getting back on track, it's also going to destroy itself, which means that we also need to do some cleanup as well. All right, this cleanup is a little bit important. In fact, it's very important. We need to clean up several things. The first thing that we need to clean up is any data structures that it's a part of. Right, so we need to remove it, remove it from the unit list, unit 
list. That's the first thing that we need to do. The second thing that we need to do is we also need to remove its sequence. Uh, remove. I'm just sort of going to write SEQ. Now this will all happen in the cleanup event, right? So after the unit gets destroyed, but before it gets erased from memory, it's going to run this cleanup event here. All right, so that's basically what the unit is going to do. And that's essentially how we're going to run our unit death. Going back to the manager, it's going to do several things. The first thing is, is it's going to find the, not S, we're going to find the ID of the unit. We are then going to clear, clear the unit list, unit list here. And then last thing is we are going to rewrite the list. Right. List. Okay, so there are other ways to do this. In fact, a much easier way, and maybe we might switch into it, is to actually just find the ID, find the index of this particular unit that has just died, and just index unit at whatever the ID is, and then we're going to remove it. R M. V. <laughs> I have so much space, but I'm not using it right. So anyway, what we're going to do is we'll fiddle around with the unit cleanup code. And so things are bound to change, but effectively the logic still holds the same. We're going to send a broadcast over to the manager to say, Hey, this unit, or rather the unit itself is going to tell the broadcaster, I'm about to leave the field. And so you need to do a whole bunch of things to make sure that you're not looking for my ID anymore. Hence why finding the ID is important. The unit is then going to, after telling the manager to do all these things, it's then going to destroy itself. Once it's done that, it's going to run the cleanup events. We don't have to do much for the cleanup. We just need to make sure that it isn't part of the unit list anymore, but more importantly, that we remove the sequence before it gets destroyed. If we don't remember to remove the sequence, if this is forgotten completely, we're going to end up with an error and we don't want that. So that's it for this section here, the theory at least. Once we get into it, uh, we will definitely have a look at this section, how we're going to tackle cleaning up our list and things are bound to change. But again, like I said, the logic is there, right? We're going to make sure that we get the broadcast from the unit telling us that, hey, a unit needs to be removed from the list. And then we need to tell the unit itself to destroy and run its cleanup events. Okay, so that's it for this section. It's going to be fairly short compared to the attacking and damage because we are covering such a fairly straightforward section of this series. So if you guys are ready for that, let's get into the next video and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.